I tried every single AI code editor out there so that you don't have to. And in this video, I'm gonna help you hopefully make a decision on which AI code editor will fit your workflow the best. I'm not gonna go throughout this video where I actually test out every single individual AI code editor out there because quite frankly, there are way too many out there. Honestly, I feel like a new one pops up every single week. And this video would end up just being like three hours long and it wouldn't be that helpful to you. Because honestly, I feel like these different AI code editors out there are a lot more similar than they are different. They're all using the same LLMs underneath the hood. so they all perform pretty similarly aside from like very, very small differences here and there. And in my opinion, the biggest way that all these AI co-editors differentiate from one another is their user experience and their user interface, as well as the different features that they offer for the price that you pay. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the general high level buckets of the different types of AI co-editors out there and give you some concrete examples of some of the biggest players in each individual's category to hopefully help you make a decision on which AI co-editor workflow that you wanna move forward with. My general thesis around AI AI coding and LLM usage in general is the fact that it is a pretty personal experience that you have to go through. And just because one person says a particular model is the best, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's gonna work the best for you. You kind of have to pick and choose to see which model fits your workflow, your communication style the best. I really do believe that. So with all of that in mind, let us get into the actual categories of AI code editors that you can use. So the first big category of AI code editors I wanna talk about are the dedicated AI IDEs. Some of the biggest players in this space, you've probably heard of them already. They are apps like Cursor or Windsurf, even VS Code with their GitHub Copilot integration counts, as well as Trey, which is like one of the newer ones that came out, which is an AI code editor, which is created by ByteDance, one of the parent companies of TikTok. Now, the biggest advantage of using one of these dedicated AI code editors simply is the fact that you get the best UI hands down because everything is all integrated into one singular app. And what I mean by the best UI is the fact that you have this lovely dedicated chat window built into the IDE, with most of these dedicated AI code editors, you can actually review and accept individual changes. Like you can see right here, I can keep this change, I can keep this change, I can undo that change, or you can then apply it all, all at once at the very bottom. And then as well in the chat interface, you can really easily tag different folders and different files super easily. Some of the other tools that I'm gonna mention later on, because they're not always gonna be a dedicated IDE, you don't get some of the benefits of like ch accepting individual changes. Instead, you have to accept all of the changes at once. So definitely from a user experience and a user interfacing perspective, all these AI code editors win without a doubt and really I've used Windsurf I've tried a little bit of Trey I've used Cursor and VS Code they're really not all that different from each other probably because they're all really based off of VS Code like that's the base fundamental layer and like I said earlier in the video I really think that all of these different AI coding solutions they're more similar than they are different and that's especially the case with these AI code editors another really big benefit of using one of these AI code editors is the fact that you can choose whatever model that you want to use typically they have a really nice model picker where you can choose all the various types of models that you want so then you can try that GPT-5 and Claude and Gemini 2.5 Pro, maybe throw in some Grok if you want to as well. It doesn't matter. You can choose whatever fits your workflow the best. Now on the same token, I do think that one of the biggest downsides of using the AI code editors is the fact that none of them are ever built by the frontier AI labs themselves. So as a result, you're always going to get less model usage for a particular model compared to purchasing an AI coding tool directly from the source, from the model provider. You're paying Cursor, for example, and then Cursor then also has to pay Claude. So no matter what, you're always going to be limited by the amount of model usage you're gonna get with every single AI code editor because they are also having to pay out these model creators every single time someone uses their model. This probably isn't a huge deal if you're not really that picky about wanting to use a certain model. But I will say if you're someone that you are dead set on using one particular model and that is what you're trying to pay the maximum usage for, you're much better off not using an AI code editor, but rather paying for an AI coding solution directly from the creators of the models, which I will talk about a little later on. So just to wrap it up with a quick summary, the biggest advantage of using one of these AI code editors is the best UI UX you can ever get because everything is bundled into one package. And the biggest downside is the fact that they do not own the model. So at the end of the day, you will always get more model usage paying the model creator directly rather than paying an AI code editor as a middleman. So now moving on to the next big grouping of AI code editing solutions is going to be plugins into your favorite IDE. So these are going to be extensions that you can install directly into your JetBrains IDE or extensions that you can install directly into your VS Code IDE. And currently the biggest player in this space is Augment Code. Funny enough, just right here, if you look at the website, it seems like they're migrating on over into a CLI implementation rather than a dedicated like extension or integration or plugin integration. 
integration. And in my opinion, some of these like integration and plugin products, they are kind of just like a watered down version of the dedicated AI IDEs that, you, that I talked about earlier in this video. They work, don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, because these products are just plugins or integrations rather than their own full-fledged end-to-end IDE, there are certain limitations of what they can do within the UI and how they present their AI agentic coding workflow. Now I will say Augment Code is probably the biggest player in the space and also their biggest selling factor specifically for Augment Code is like an industry leading context engine. They've said that they have the best context engine for handling gigantic databases or gigantic code bases compared to any other AI coding solution out there. Now, when I personally used it, I didn't find that big of a performance difference, but also it's probably because I didn't use it with a big enough code base to begin with. So that's Augment Code's value proposition. And also fun fact, before Windsurf was created, Windsurf was actually owned by a company called Codium. And Codium started off as a plugin and integration into all the various IDEs before they went off to create their own IDE with Windsurf. So it does seem like in this day and age, at least at the time of filming this video, these like integration and extension product offerings within a popular IDE, they have fallen off a little bit of popularity. And now a lot of people are switching over into this CLI interface, which is the next big category of AI coding solutions I wanna talk about. The next big category of AI coding solutions is CLI tools, command line interface tools, with probably the most popular one being Claude Code. If you've watched any videos on my channel before, you've definitely seen me talk about Claude Code because for a while, and even right now, it is part of my AI coding workflow. And the way that these CLI tools work is really simple. It is a tool that just works directly within your command line that you can interact with various code and ask for agentic coding changes and it'll make them on the fly there. It seems like all of the CLI tools are being built by companies that actually create their models. For example, the creators of Claude have Claude Code. OpenAI has also something similar called OpenAI Codex. Google's Gemini product also has a Gemini CLI. So it seems like right now, all of the actual frontier model lab creators, their preferred solution for this agentic coding solution is by offering it via a CLI tool. The biggest benefit of using one of these CLI CLI tools is the fact that because you are paying these model providers directly, you are essentially paying for the utmost maximum usage for that particular model. So for example, I pay for Claude code right here. I'm really paying for the utmost maximum usage of Claude models. If I were to pay for OpenAI Codex, I would be paying for the utmost maximum usage of the GPT model. That is essentially what you are paying for when you're trying to use any of the CLI tools, maximum model usage. So if you're somebody that's really opinionated and you really love one particular model family, like the Claude models, for example, and all you care about is having the maximum amount of usage for that particular model, your best bet is paying the model creators directly and using their CLI tool. They work really, really well. But one of the biggest downsides that you can see right here is that the UI is kind of horrible, especially if you're not a big terminal junkie. If you're somebody that lives in the terminal and loves being in the terminal and you're a terminal rat, you probably love this so, so much. But hey, we built graphical interfaces for a reason. Let's not resist them, you know, let's not oppose them. So that's one of the biggest downsides of using these CLI tools. They all live directly within the command line and I'm not like I'm comfortable in the command line, but at the end of the day, even I don't think it's the best UI. Like you can't accept individual changes here and there. You can't make changes directly within your terminal right here. You always have to open up a full fledged IDE to review the changes and everything. So that is the biggest downside hands down with using one of these CLI tools. And now I wanna migrate over to talking about this kind of hybrid solution of CLI tool with a better graphical interface. So now let's move on over to talking about the next category of AI agentic coding solutions with a bit of a hybrid terminal and a hybrid AI code editor solution with a product called Warp, which also happens to be the sponsor of today's video. Now, while they are the sponsor of today's video, I've been a long time Warp user since 2021, I believe, when they first launched, and it's been my go-to terminal ever since then. And in recent years, they've invested a ton into this whole new agentic coding workflow feature set that's become a really big part of my day-to-day -day AI coding workflow. Let me show you a quick preview of the various features that it has and how it all works. It's this nice, interesting middle ground of existing in the terminal, so it has a kind of a familiarity of a CLI tool, but it also has a much better user interface, user experience for the user. Let me show you exactly what that means. Now with Warp, it is model agnostic. You can pick and choose whatever models that you wanna pick and work with. Uh, and then because it works directly within this, the command line, 
the command line still works out of the box that like you can do certain command line tools like CD or whatever. But then warp is also able to intelligently detect whether or not you're trying to use a terminal command or you're trying to do an agentic coding workflow. So right now I just pasted a little code change and it's able to detect that this is not a command line tool usage, but rather this is just like a full blown agentic coding workflow. Warp has really evolved from being just a go-to terminal to almost being like this agentic developer first, agentic workflow first software tool. And what I mean by that is the fact that they have support for a file tree, a really lightweight file tree for you to go in and look at any file that you want and make any lightweight changes from there. And you can even open the file. It's a very lightweight file editor with syntax highlighting and all of that. It's not a full blown IDE, but it's more so like a terminal and IDE had a baby and it's a really supercharged terminal that's kind of designed specifically for this agentic coding workflow. As you can see, I asked it to make a specific coding change in a certain file and it made that change for me. And as I see this change, and as I look at this file, you can then go in and reject the change, accept the change, make additional edits uh, within here because Warp just released a dedicated lightweight code editor, like I mentioned earlier, within the terminal itself. So you can make any additional coding changes that you want as you can see right here, and then you can apply the changes right then and there. So from here, you can then view the changes really quickly that is made in your current branch, and you can go in, review them, make additional edits as you want in this lightweight code editor. So as you can see, Warp is kind of this in-between of not just a pure CLI tool, but also not a full-on dedicated AI code editor. It's this hybrid solution that kind of has the best of both worlds that can handle a lot of workflows for you. In this next segment of the video, I want to talk about some of the additional features that you get from some of these various providers. While we talked about a lot of these AI coding solutions just as a one, one singular unit, right? You're either just an AI code editor or you're either just a CLI tool or something like that. Nowadays in 2025, a lot of these tools, even though they started off as one thing, they've kind of evolved into something much bigger and have a lot more service offerings. For example, Cursor started off as a dedicated AI code editor, but now they've launched a whole lot of additional features as well. They have a Cursor GitHub application that can perform code reviews on any pull requests that you have. They have a Cursor CLI tool as well, and they also have background tasks where you can kick off coding jobs from a dedicated web browser that'll make code changes in the cloud and then spin up a PR for you. Same thing with some of the other CLI tools like OpenAI Codex. I know OpenAI Codex also has that GitHub app and they also have a background agent tool from their dedicated web browser as well. And Claude currently has a GitHub app integration that will review any PR that comes and you can ask for any code changes from directly inside of a GitHub PR comment. But I wouldn't be surprised if in the next couple of weeks and months, a dedicated co Claude code web browser comes out as well where you can start making code changes directly from a web browser in a background agent. So a lot of these various tools are becoming more and more than just a single singular coding tool. They're really trying to go for a much larger ecosystem play where you can make a bunch of code changes from anywhere in the world, from any surface that you want. So that's something to consider as well in terms of what you're paying for, but also know that when you're paying for these extra bells and whistles and features, you are paying for them. You're not paying for just the pure model usage. So which code editor solution is the best for you? I'll say this, if you're somebody that really just cannot stand the terminal and you just love graphical interfaces and you wanna stay away from the terminal as much as possible, obviously the AI code editor the dedicated IDEs is probably what you're looking for. Now, on the other hand, if you are an absolute terminal junkie and you love being in the terminal, then I think warp is kind of an easy choice because you get that nice balance of living inside the terminal, but then with their new lightweight co-editor feature and file tree feature, you get a lot of benefits of the IDE such that you can do so much agentic coding workflow all within one app inside of your terminal without having to open up a separate IDE. Then obviously you gotta go with either the warp approach within the terminal or within one of the AI code editors so you can pick and choose the various models you want to make changes with. But then on the other hand, if you're someone you don't really care about picking through different models and you're just obsessed with using one model and one model only, whether that be Gemini or a Claude or a GPT, then your best bet is probably going to be to just go directly to OpenAI, go directly to Claude and pay for their subscription there so that you can pay for the maximum amount of model usage directly from the provider. But this also does have a little bit of a downside because the CLI tools, you know, I love them, don't get me wrong, but the UI is just kind of horrendous, not gonna lie. Like it's the worst UI out of all of the different options that we talked about in this video. Whereas if you were to go with a solution like Warp, for example, you could still use one particular model, but you do get that benefit of that really nice interactive UI to make some of your AI agentic coding changes yourself. At the end, all these AI coding tools, they're all really great. And you can probably go with some type of hybrid solution as well. 
For example, my current day-to-day -day co agentic coding workflow, I currently pay for the $20 subscription to Cursor. And the reason why I do that is just so I can get access to the tab to complete feature. I think Cursor has the best tab to complete, tab to code feature out of any other tool. And then I also pay for the $100 a month Cloud Code plan, as well as the $50 a month Warp Turbo plan. The reason why I pay for both of these solutions is because like, yes, while I like to use Cloud for a lot of day-to-day -day coding, sometimes I want to switch on over to using a different model if Claude is having a little bit of trouble finding a solution to something that I'm trying to build. And as a dedicated Warp user since like back in 2021, I'm really familiar with the terminal as well as a really big fan of their file tree and lightweight code editor function as well. And their agentic coding workflow is pretty good too. It, I haven't really found any huge performance differences between any of the different softwares that I've used. It's really, I think, coming down to the user experience that's the biggest differentiator across any of these various AI coding solutions out there. So I still use Cloud Code for some AI coding changes, but I also use Warp to play around with different models and sometimes just have the Warp agent instead and make those changes for me as well. That's been my current AI coding setup for the past couple of months, but I'm sure it's gonna change in the future as well because every single month it seems like different models, different software is coming out and you just gotta try them all, you know? I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and if you do, leave them in the comments down below. I'll try my best to respond to as many of them as I can. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.